can find in any country. But of course, in your country, uh, or maybe in your native country, or maybe maybe you will leave um, uh, your country and go to and start to uh, walk in, in uh, Europe or United States, Australia, Africa, I don't know. Anywhere there you will use international name. So we do not use brand name, use international name, first name. Look at the name of biguanides. This is the only one drug, it is called metformin. Remember, please, very uh, spread it medication, use all over the world. 50 years we have experience of using of that medication, metformin. What do they? What does it do? It reduces the production of glucose in liver by liver, and decrease insulin resistance in liver mostly. Next group of drugs: TZD, tiazolidines. They also in decrease production of glucose in liver, and also increase insulin sensitivity, but in adipose tissue and in muscles. So biguanides and tiazolidimdions, TZD, they have a common effect. They decrease insulin resistance. It's a main in pathogenase of type 2 diabetes. And they reduce secretion of glucose in liver. Next group of drugs, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. So only one drug also here, acarbose. What does it do? It is slow the absorption of glucose in GIT. So it blocks receptors, uh, inhibit receptors. Remember, GLUT receptors in GIT, gastrointestinal tract, and reduce absorption of glucose into blood. It's very mild hypoglycemic medication, but anyway, possible to use it in combination or at the beginning, in the early stage of pre-diabetic condition. Next. DPP4 inhibitors. I already mentioned them when I told you about normal physiology of GIT. Remember, I told you in, uh, in cretines, it's a system of internal peptides which intensify insulin effect. So there is an enzyme which suppress our own peptides, our own in cretines. That, so, and we have a drug which inhibit DPP4 in the uh, GIT. But actually, here you see only four types of uh, drugs. But if you open the new guidelines, you may see more than nine various medications. DPP-4 inhibitors. It's an oral medication. All the previous drugs which I showed you, this one, they all were oral drugs. I mean, in pills, we can give them in pills. DPP-4 inhibitor is also oral uh, medication. Uh, it helps to control blood sugar due to the normalization of incretine effect on pancreas. Next group of drug, GLP-1 agonist. GLP-1 agonists, it's a type of the drugs which are actually incretines. So these medications, this drug is incretine by itself. We can give pure incretine to body of to people, to person with diabetes, and these incretines will mimic, imitate effect of the own incretines. Also make a note, glucagon-like peptide agonists, it is an injected medication. It could, should be injected subcutaneous, same like insulin. Uh, and you may find some medications with the combination insulin plus GLP-1 agonists. For example, degludec plus liraglutide. Uh, this drug, if I'm not mistaken, it is called Rizodec. Ah, no, 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 Rizodec is a mixture. Mixture. Sorry, I forget how it's called. Well, okay, uh, there, is, there are the drugs, because why uh, I uh, company brand name, I don't know more. Why I told you to remember. Uh, international names because in various countries there are various drugs and some of the drugs are so new. Uh, diabetology, it's um, very uh, quickly developed uh, uh, branch of medicine. 
And really every year we have a new medications. Uh, because in our country, we still do not use uh, GLP-1 agonists. Uh, they are not registered yet. Uh, that's why I don't have high, by myself, I don't have a, a big experience of using of this group of medications, GLP-1 agonists. So sometimes I, uh, no, sometimes I can say that uh, I do not, don't remember brand names, but international names, you should know always. Uh, and the last group of drugs, it's SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, all, it's also a new group of medications. We use them nearly five last years. Uh, they are registered in Kyrgyzstan. They are registered in the most of the uh, countries all, in, all over the world. And uh, why it is so? Because what effect do they have? Look, panaglifazine, dapaglifazine, uh, etaglifazine. Uh, they re stop reabsorption of glucose in kidneys. So with the help of these drugs, more glucose filtrated with the urine. Um, and then if you have a good logic, if you have a good uh, clinical sense, you may ask the question, if this, these medications increase glucose in urine, uh, do uh, will we see polyuria? And the answer to the question is yes, but it is a mild polyuria, which is look like effect of diuretics. So as you to inhibitors, they decrease glucose level by eliminating glucose with kidneys. And these drugs, they also have mild diuretic effect. If you finished your cardio classes, I hope that you know that diuretics we may use in hypertension and kidney disorders and high heart failure. And what's the, uh, the result of all this speech? So the medications as you to inhibitors are the single drugs among all of this, which I showed you, which we can use in patients with heart failure without diabetes. According to the new guidelines, uh, in cardiology, we every year we also have various new guidelines in treatment of various disorders. So in 2021, previous year, we uh, have a new guidelines where it's written that SGLT2 inhibitors is possible to use in people with heart failure, with chronic heart failure, because they successfully decrease edema and increase heart output. It's a very good effect. What uh, is the logically for us? According to the effect of the medications, we may choose which drug is possible. This slide I also showed you once again, repeat it, uh, make a screenshot. Now I hope you understand uh, what does it mean in which level we can use what drug. But now we can answer the question in what situation we may give this or that drug. Because the most of patients whom you will see, it is type 2 diabetes, we'll speak about type 2 diabetes. Uh, make a screenshot of this slide. Again, on the, uh, of course, in our practice classes, we'll speak more about this. I will give you clinical cases, we will do them, maybe discuss some patients if they come uh, into to our department. But generally, it shows, this table shows you various drugs in various situations. Look at the upper part of the picture. First line treatment. First line means uh, basic. Basic first line therapy is metformin. Metformin, it's a basic medication for treatment of the most patients with type two diabetes. Plus lifestyle changes. Lifestyle is diet plus physical Activity plus weight management for people who have obesity. If HbA1c above target, most of the patients should have less than 7% after three months or three or six months when we start treatment, post treatment. Look at the middle, middle part, middle part, not left, not right, middle, orange color without established 
ACCVD. It's associated cardiovascular diseases or CKD, chronic kidney disease. So people who do not have cardiovascular disorders, who don't have chronic kidney disease. Middle part, uh, orange. If you need, if you want to add something else except metformin, you may give DPP-4 or GLP-1 or SGLT-2 or TZD. That is normal. Some of these four add. Look at the blue part. If, uh, so orange was, so if you need to minimize the risk of hypoglycemia, if your patient has a risk of hypoglycemia, then uh, blue part, if your patient has a problem with weight gain, so obesity, then better to give uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist because this medication can effectively, effectively reduce body weight. It was shown that we can uh, use the medications to decrease uh, obesity because GLP-1 receptor agonists, I, I think I forget to tell you that at the beginning, they also, uh, at, they also stimulate uh, hunger center. They block, they block hunger center in our brain and uh, decrease appetite. Uh, they also decrease emptying of the stomach. So we can use these medications in people with diabetes in treatment of obesity also. Or as due to inhibitors, because these drugs, uh, they remove glucose from the body <clears throat> with, GIT, uh, with the urine and also help to, to reduce uh, body weight. Look at the left part. Left part, uh, red one. <clears throat> Established associated cardiovascular disorders or chronic kidney disease. So if patient has cardiovascular disorders or chronic kidney disease, we may use GLP-1 receptor agonists or SGLT2 inhibitors. These drugs are more preferable, especially if heart failure or chronic kidney disease is predominant. But always remember about pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of medications for that you have your clinical pharmacology classes that uh, what you should remember, you need to check the marrow filtration rate, so GFR, according to GFR, you may not or you uh, may or you may not use this or that medication. It depends on type of drug, it depends on uh, group of drug. For example, as you to inhibitors, you may not use if GFR less than 30. Uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists, you may use in any stage of chronic kidney disease. Metformin, you may not use if GFR less than 30 or if it is chronic heart failure stage four. It's a, this is the specificity of various drugs. I think uh, until you are students, maybe some of these um, things are not important uh, for general of you, for most of you, but uh, anyway, anyway, uh, general information about medication, you should remember. And the last, look at the right part of the slide. Uh, where is sulfonylurea and meglitinides? They are here. If cost is the most important thing, for whom? For your patient. Sometimes people, they cannot buy expensive medications. It may happen. Uh, it may happen in low-income countries. It may happen in high-income countries. But sometimes price is the most important thing. In this situation, we will choose metformin plus sulfonylurea or meglitinides. These medications are third-line drugs, but anyway, they are successfully decrease glucose level, but they, are no, they do not protect from um, cardiovascular and chronic kidney disorders, unfortunately. But anyway, possible with these drugs, possible to uh, control diabetes. And look at the down part of the all of tables. There, where is insulin? It is there. If, if you give one, two, three together, sometimes four drugs, but still you cannot achieve 
target, your patient still have high glucose level. Why it may happen? No diet, no physical activity, no glucose control, maybe problem with pancreas, uh, insulin uh, dysfunction, insulin decreases. In these cases, if we cannot control diabetes with the free and more medications, we can add insulin treatment. Usually it is a basal insulin, usually, but not always. It is very personal. Uh, usually we start with basal insulin uh, together, with, together with medications. Uh, if need, sometimes we add prandial insulin. Sometimes we give mixtures of insulin. But if you want to treat type 2 diabetes correctly, don't forget about pathogenetical treatment. Insulin is not pathogenetical treatment for type 2 diabetes. It is only symptomatical. If you want to do correctly, add oral medication or maybe GLP-1 injected education, uh, medication plus insulin. This is just general information. As I said, uh, you need to read it. I will send. Um, more text about this slide and uh, hope that you will uh, study it. The next step is self-monitoring. Mm, self -monitoring. What does it mean? Uh, patients should be educated to control their glucose. They should be educated to control their glucose at home by with the help of glucometer. But, uh, but self-control is not only glucometer. It is also control of body weight. It is also control of uh, blood pressure, also control, it's also food care, um, quit smoking, lifestyle, diet, means person by himself or herself uh, controls uh, all these uh, uh, moments. So, well, this is the glucometer, it's a small device. As I said in practice, uh, we will uh, examine glucose level. I will show how to do that. And uh, no, I hope that you will not have problems with this uh, uh, device. Then next in treatment, and I think it will be final in treatment, then we'll finish with complications. Uh, people with diabetes, they should control blood pressure, they should control cholesterol, and they should control uh, platelets uh, activity, means uh, thrombo uh, tr thrombolytic treatment. Why? Diabetes does not kill by itself. Uh, diabetes stimulates formation of complications, micro and macrovascular disorders. So diabetes stimulates hypercoagulation. It stimulates elevation of cholesterol, stimulates atherosclerosis, and thinning of uh, endothelium of the vessels. People with diabetes, they will not die from diabetes itself. They will die from stroke, MI, kidney failure, amputation, gangrene, uh, and uh, maybe sometimes some uh, neurological disorders like, uh, no, I said stroke. So that's why blood pressure control is very important. You See here, target level of BP, uh, people less than 65 years old, it should be uh, less than 130. Uh, people more than 65 years old, uh, less than 140. Of course, it's, uh, uh, this is the true for patients uh, who already have hypertension. Lipid targets, you also see them on slide. Uh, I will not uh, pronounce this. Uh, please uh, read carefully that according to the risk, cardiovascular risk, this is, please, cardiology classes. In cardiology classes, cardiovascular risk, teachers should tell you. If they do not, also in practice, we'll speak uh, about this, that all people with cardiovascular diseases, we classify them according to risk of associated cardiovascular complications, stroke and MI. Uh, people with diabetes and cardiovascular complications, they are always in high, moderate, and very high risk. Moderate, high, and very high risk. And according to this, how to understand this? We have various uh, charts, uh, scores uh, for calculation of the risk. And according to their risk, uh, 
we see we have various target level of LDL, cholesterol, low density lipoprotein, proteins, cholesterol. But the basic information that all people with diabetes, if they are more than 40 years old, they should drink prevention treatment with the statins. Antiplatelet therapy includes aspirin and uh, if need, clopidogrel. For example, uh, patients with uh, stable angina, you may use uh, aspirin 150 mg daily plus clopidogrel, for example, 75 mg daily. But generally, that people with diabetes, they should drink uh, antiplatelet therapy as a primary prevention, means they do not have cardiovascular disease, but, but to prevent them, they need to drink aspirin. Uh, unfortunately, anyway, people with diabetes. So if you have questions, as usual, you're welcome. Uh, anyway, people with diabetes, they may have complications. And we classify complications on two big groups, acute and chronic. Acute complications now is a real, uh, this is a real situation. Uh, we have four basic Four, three, why four? Three basic acute complications. And uh, only 1% of people die from that complications. But still, it happens. Uh, even just in my experience, just a few days ago, we lost a friend of the family uh, with type 1 diabetes because of hypoglycemia. He had... Um, many, many years of diabetes, more than 20 years of type 1 diabetes, and uh, maybe it was a poor control, or maybe he uh, did not feel hypoglycemia. It may happen with the lonely progressive diabetic patients. Uh, he did not understand hypoglycemic symptoms and uh, uh, become unconscious, and uh, it was too late when, when the relatives found him. It may happen still may happen, but it's a real situation. Most of the patients will die due to the macrovascular chronic complications. But anyway, first acute complication, diabetic hypoglycemia. Uh, diabetic hypoglycemia, please don't mix it with physiological hypoglycemia. We all may have physiological hypoglycemia. Every day when you wake up in the morning, or in the evening or daytime, if you when you want to eat, this is physiological hypoglycemia. But why it's called physiological? It can easily uh, compensate it by liver. Liver produce glucose. Diabetic hypoglycemia. It is a complication. Uh, it's the situation when glucose level decreases less than two point five, less than 40, 40 mg per deciliter. Uh, usually, reason is. For people who, who may have diabetic hypoglycemia, people who use insulin, uh, or people who use drugs which increase insulin action, like sulfonyl ureas. Other medications, other med drugs, they, did not, they don't decrease glucose less than normal. So only uh, situation when people use insulin or drugs which uh, stimulate insulin secretion. Uh, symptoms develop very quickly. Uh, symptoms, uh, remember when you want to eat, what happened, especially for a long time. Hunger, uh, sometimes aggressive behavior, you are searching for food, uh, sometimes uh, anxiety. anxiety. Uh, so people with diabetes may have of course, sweating, uh, headache, uh, weakness, sometimes atypical behavior, uh, maybe aggressive in child, it just look like they want to sleep or they start crying without any reason. Uh, the problem in speaking, if, if uh, nothing was done in this moment, uh, uh, person become unconsciousness and after five to seven minutes, if it is severe hypoglycemia, uh, you may see death because without glucose, our brain can't live more than 10 minutes, seven to 10 minutes, the same as without oxygen. Uh, what is important to educate people with diabetes, especially who use insulin, what is hypoglycemia, what are the symptoms of hypoglycemia, and what to do in this moment, because hypoglycemia develops very quickly, a few minutes. 
it may develop. In what situations it may develop? Person forget to eat after insulin injection. Uh, do physical activity, forget to measure blood glucose before exercises. Uh, do not eat enough uh, carbohydrates after insulin injection. Drink enough alcohol, alcohol block glyconeogenesis uh, in liver, uh, especially hot uh, drinks. What to do in these cases? First of all, education, and then if hypoglycemia started, uh, anything sweet. So if a person can swallow, sugar, honey, candy, sweet juice, possible. Uh, glucose spray, possible to, you, to use pills with glucose, also good. If person is unconsciousness, no reaction, then we, can, we should not put anything sweet into a mouth, of course. It may lead to aspiration. Uh, we can do glucagon injection intramuscular or glucose IV. Better, of course, to do 40% of glucose IV. It's uh, very quickly to normalize uh, situation. Next complication, next to acute, it's still acute complication, the situation with hyperglycemia and first is diabetic ketoacidosis. Uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, it is acute complication of type 1 diabetes. Uh, it is uh, when it is, when it is developed. Uh, it's usually developed at the beginning of type 1 diabetes, usually. When people only, they, uh, their disease only started, when they do not know about uh, their disease, especially in childs, adolescents, especially in small childs, uh, at the beginning, as a, in, in the manifestation of diabetes, uh, they may have ketoacidosis, but not only in manifestation. Sometimes if people are with type 1 diabetes, or very rare, it may present in type 2 diabetes, but may, but may present. Uh, if some uh, infection present, for example, COVID infection, we show we have a lot of, we had a lot of patients with diabetic ketoacidosis during this pandemia, pandemic uh, moment. Uh, some another emergencies, maybe MI, stroke, uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, it is a stress, uh, may develop in any stress situation because in stress situation, people have elevation of cortisol. Cortisol suppress insulin activity. Level of insulin in blood decrease or eat activity decreases. Uh, what happened? Diabetic ketoacidosis develops slowly in few days, not in the, uh, not in the short period of time like it, like it is shown in uh, various movies. Uh, if person forget to do insulin injection once or twice, nothing happened. Nothing happened, really. Uh, diabetic ketoacidosis uh, develops slowly. And for adult people, we need sometimes weeks for a developing of a coma, ketotic coma. For child, two to three days, but not hours. Not, absolutely. Uh, so uh, how it is developed? Without insulin, adipose tissue destroys it, will, it produces free fatty acids. Look, in absence of insulin, free fatty acids released from adipose tissue, liver, convert them to ketone bodies. Remember your first and second semester, your biochemistry. They will convert them into the ketone bodies, and ketone bodies are also used in Krebs cycle. But level, ketone bodies level is so high that they decrease pH of the blood, uh, stimulates uh, metabolic acidosis, intoxication, and diabetic coma. Plus to this, people with ketoacidosis, if they don't have enough insulin, they have severe hyperglycemia. Glucose level increase, look, more than 250 mg per deciliter. Hyper, uh, imagine how many is diarrhea, sometimes it is 10, 12 liters daily. It provokes severe dehydration and critical losses of electrolytes. So symptoms include, uh, because of intoxication with ketone bodies, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, uh, sometimes uh, hyperthermia, increase of temperature, uh, plus to these hyperglycemia provokes polyuria, polyd polydipsia, dehydration, dry skin, dry mouth, dry eyes, uh, because it is intoxication, you'll see hyperventilation, small respiration. Patients have tachycardia, 
uh, and then hypertension and specific smell from them. Uh, it's called acetone smell in brief in ear. <clears throat> How it look like? Well, girls, if you use sometimes nail polish or if you use sometimes uh, paint, some, some paint in when you maybe color something at home. Uh, in these situations, uh, uh, patients uh, patients may uh, you you the same the same smell like this smell of acetone may present from the patient of uh, with the ketoacetones. What we will do? You need to treat pathogenetically. First of all, you will give fluids. Simple saline solution. Извините, пожалуйста. Саламат, я на лекции перезвоню. Simple saline solution. You will give IV one or two liters an hour. And second, it is insulin deficiency. You give administration of insulin. Remember what type of insulin? Regular insulin. 0 0.1 unit per kg. <clears throat> As I said, just generally, in book, you will read more. And the last acute complication is called non-ketotic hyperosmolar state. It's a complication of type 2 diabetes, mostly. What is the mechanism? What is the pathogenesis? Uh, it's a real complication, but very dangerous. Imagine that you stay in the hot weather. I think that you always, sometimes you feel the situation, 40 degree, 45 degree, but you don't have opportunity to drink enough water. How you will feel yourself? You, will, you want to drink too much. Uh, urination decreased. Uh, headache may present. Uh, that is because of hyperosmolarity. Look like this mechanism of non-ketotic hyperosmolar state look like a situation when we lost water in the moment when we do not drink enough water, uh, but uh, we lost it with urine. When it may happen, it may happen in people with type 2 diabetes if they have hyperglycemia for long period of time. Due to hyperglycemia, they lost water with urine, but they do not drink enough water external water. You may ask why it may happen. No thirst. Why no thirst? Neuropathy. People with diabetic neuropathy, neuropathy, they do not have normal sense of thirst. So this is the, this, uh, oh, how to say, uh, this balance between eliminated water and water intake. Blood becomes hyper or smaller. Osmolarity of blood increase. Uh, you will see in blood hyperglycemia, hyperosmolarity, severe dehydration, but no ketone in blood. And look at the symptoms. Symptoms are look like uh, symptoms of stroke because uh, and kidney failure. You will see real insufficiency, mental and neurological signs, seizures. Aphasia, muscle facilitation, nystagmus, uh, because it, there is hyperosmolarity, coagulation of blood increased, thrombosis, and finally coma. Uh, what we can do? IV fluids. IV fluids here are most important. We do not start with insulin. We don't start with insulin because the reason is just uh, hyperconcentration, hyperosmolarity. When we start giving fluids, we dilute blood, glucose level decreased by itself. Also about this, more read in the uh, literature. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> then, <clears throat> last topic, micro and macrovascular chronic, so with big letters, chronic complications. Uh, chronic complications also classify on two big groups, microvascular and macrovascular. Microvascular complications. Uh, hyperglycemia provokes uh, glycation of the proteins in endothelium of the small vessels, thinning of basement membrane of the vessel, and finally, destruction and damaging of endothelial cells. 
like small small holes appear in the uh, arterioles and veins. According to that, you will see three complications, eyes, kidneys, nerves, diabetic retinopathy, where you will see small vessels, eyes, diabetic retinopathy. The first reason of blindness all over the world is a diabetic retinopathy. It's a damage of the vessels in retina, uh, most frequent cause of blindness. Uh, endothelium damage, thin of basal membrane of the vessel, increasing of pressure inside uh, in the vessel, uh, hemorrhages in retina, uh, deposition of proteins and lipids from, uh, from plasma, from blood plasma, edema. Uh, stages, uh, there are three stages of diabetic retinopathy, non-proliferative stage, proliferative stage, and end stage of eye disease. So uh, uh, R1, R2, I3. Also in practice, we'll speak more about that. The only one treatment of this complication, remember that first of the first in treatment of diabetic complications, it is a glucose control. Then uh, in diabetic retinopathy, we can use a laser of photocoagulation. So this picture shows you how a person with diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, look at this boy, how a person with diabetic retinopathy or what type of vision person has with the black spots, areas of hemorrhages and uh, exudates. But unfortunately, it's not always so uh, brightly visible. If a uh, macular area is not involved, people may not have any symptoms. That is the rule that people with diabetic retinopathy, they need to examine their eye every year. Once a year, we uh, recommend them to, have, to do uh, eye examination, eye fundus examination. Diabetic nephropathy, chronic kidney disease is a result of diabetic nephropathy. And uh, the first symptom is microalbuminuria, when glucose uh, destroy. A nephron's first symptom, it is appearing of protein in urine, but not just a big molecules of albumin or of uh, globulins. It is a molecules of albumin, microalbumin urea. Uh, also, with, as with retinopathy, we need to examine group, um, albumin level in urine once a year for all people with diabetes. And this scale, I hope, your teacher in nephrology showed you, uh, if not, please make a screenshot. Uh, diabetic nephropathy, we classify, if a person has diabetic nephropathy, we automatically classify it to chronic kidney disease and start treatment as a chronic kidney disease. Uh, so chronic kidney disease, we classify according to stages, uh, sorry, according to um, description. We describe GFR, five stages of GFR, and we described albumin loss, three stages of albumin loss. Uh, and what does it mean, risk? It's a risk of, of dialysis. Uh, red color, very high risk. If patient has at least a three and GFR less than 45, he or she in high risk of dialysis, et cetera, et cetera. You may compare. So, and the last microvascular complication is diabetic neuropathy. Uh, the most common complication in all diabetic patients, diabetic neuropathy it is a damage of peripheral and central nerves. Uh, according to classification of nerves, we have uh, uh, somatic and autonomic nerve fibers, somatic nerves which innervate peripheral cells like skin, muscles, bones, etc autonomic and we can control these so somatic nerves, we can control them. When we feel pain, it is a uh, sensitive nerves. When you want to move our, any move, to do any movement, it is a uh, motion nerves. Uh, but anyway, uh, we can control what uh, everything which we, what we can control, we call somatic uh, nerves. Autonomic nerves, we cannot control them. 
uh, these are the nerves which innervate our internal organs, heart, GIT, uh, urination, uh, sweating, dry skin, uh, constriction, dilatation of vessels, etc., etc., etc. These are autonomic. According to this, all nerves are damaged. Somatic, peripheral somatic neuropathy is the most common key situation. Uh, people have problem with a sensation, especially on feet. Uh, people may have problem with motion. They have uh, pain in feet. They may have motor weakness. They may have loss of sensations. A very dangerous situation if they do not feel uh, any uh, anything at all. Uh, they don't have protection from any injury. Uh, if they have autonomic neuropathy, they may have problem with their blood, heart, uh, tachycardia present, atony of stomach, uh, atony of GIT, diarrhea, or constipation. That or that, it depends on uh, what nerves are mostly damaged, uh, uh, sympathetic or parasympathetic. Uh, sometimes cranial nerve uh, involves uh, paralysis of extraocular nerves, uh, impaired uh, papillary response, uh, uh, absence of uh, feeling of thirst or hypoglycemia. Also, people do not feel that symptoms. Uh, treatment, unfortunately, only symptomatic. We do not, don't have drugs which can normalize nerve impulses. We can treat only symptomatic. If people have pain in feet, we give painkillers. If it is autonomic neuropathy, uh, depend on the organ, you will give symptomatic treatment. If it is tachycardia, beta blockers, if it is diarrhea, anti-diarrhea drugs, if it is uh, erectile dysfunction, 5, uh, 5G stress inhibitors, et cetera. Microvascular complications, I will not tell you about that. <laughs> Relax, uh, because this is uh, the topic of uh, your other subjects. So look, just but remember, what are the microvascular complications of diabetes? Atherosclerosis, hyperglycemia provokes formation of atherosclerotic clots and plaques on the vessels, on the vessel, uh, on the inner endothelium of big vessels. Uh, ischemic heart disease, it's a big group of disorders which include uh, a heart failure, stable, unstable in China, prince metal in China, Various types of arrhythmias, uh, uh, heart atherosclerosis, uh, cardiosclerosis, etc. MI also. You see a cardiology topic. Cerebrovascular diseases like uh, stroke, ischemic stroke, uh, hemorrhagic stroke, uh, uh, 24 hours uh, stroke attack, etc. It's your neurology classes next year. Peripheral vascular disease. Uh, endoarteriitis, uh, uh, angiopathy of low limb and uh, upper limb versus gangrene. It is your surgery classes also next year and uh, your 10th semester. But this is all atherosclerosis, clots, close uh, blood supply. So blood supply is poor according to the atherosclerosis of the big vessels. It is a general pathogenesis of all macrovascular complications in diabetes. And a final complication, diabetic foot. It's not micro and not macro purely. It is a mixed complication, mixture of two complications, as microvascular, as macrovascular. Uh, diabetic foot uh, could be two types, ischemic and neuropathic. Ischemic due to the, this one, peripheral vascular disease, neuropathic ulcer due to the loss of sensation and diabetic neuropathy. Uh, also, if you are interested more in this complication, you may, of course, uh, first of all, of, co of course, we'll speak on classes and uh, I will send you more literature. But general information, the diabetic food is a dangerous, progressive complication of diabetes, which is very, first of all, costly to treat. And second, it's difficult to treat because um, people sometimes uh, they cannot stop uh, uh, walking. They need to go on, on their uh, work. They need to move. 
uh, in some way, but uh, because one of the treatment of this complication, it is a uh, rest stop moving, uh, stop walking. So, but two type of ulcers. That's my patient. It's also, it's ischemic, ischemic gangrene here. No, in, this is infected ulcer because of uh, just people, person does not uh, feel uh, injury during walking. This is classical ulcer, uh, neuropathic ulcer in patient with absolutely loss of sensation, no sensation at all. So, Anna, for today enough, I finished with these lecture, of course, it's impossible to tell you about diabetes in the two hours, but once again, we'll come back that in practice classes, you will come back to diabetes in your next classes, in 10th semester, in 8th semester. Anyway, you will see, uh, you will repeat this disease. Uh, remember that it is very dangerous and in your practice, any doctor, you will be any doctor, you will see diabetic patients. If you're a gynecologist, you will have women with diabetes. If you're a neurologist, you're welcome. People after stroke, most of them have diabetes. Uh, cardiologist, 50% of your, your patients will have diabetes. Surgeries, yes, also. Many of them also have diabetes, etc. Diabetes, you should know. Any questions? Com uh, so commentators, co uh, any comments, any questions? No. no. Okay. No, so okay, so don't have, que have questions tomorrow also to lecture, same link. Same link. Uh, link always be same, I hope, because I, uh, you see, I read from our uh, department Zoom. Today I have a problems to open it, but I hope that uh, everything will be fine. So same link tomorrow at two o'clock. Uh, yes, uh, you asked me about thematic plan. Of course, I will send you just uh, in a few few minutes. I will send you thematic plan of uh, lectures and practice classes. Okay, and syllabus, of course, also. No questions. Then see you tomorrow. Okay, that's it, Daniel. Bye. Bye.